Hello, God Life family. Welcome back again today. We are talking about the devotion here on the Facebook page. What is God really like? There's probably no greater question than that. Again, my name is Jesse. I'm a pastor here in America. I'm in the church in Seattle, which is in the state of Washington. Please leave in the comments where you're watching from. Also, let us know what prayer requests you have. In addition to that, please share this video now with other people so they can hear about God, His goodness. They can be encouraged. Faith is trusting, trusting in God. But who is God? When you open up the Bible in the first verse, in the beginning, God. That's right, God always existed. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God will always exist. He is the source of every blessing. He is the source of life. God is good. Now, uh, there's going to be a lot of lies and misperceptions that you're going to hear about God, false teachings during your life. You need to be discerning. So you need a true source, and that true source is God's Word. It's important what God says about himself, not what people say, because people try to change the image of God, but what does God reveal about himself? And he's revealed many things. First of all, in nature, when you look around creation, you look up into the sky, the sun, moon, and the stars, you can see that God exists and that God is powerful. It is a powerful God who set up everything, including the orbits, the perfect distance, spatially, you know, the sun and the earth. It is God who is creative, God who is intelligent. This is not random or by accident. God exists, so appreciate nature, appreciate his creation, but don't worship anything created. Worship the creator, your maker. He's the one who knit you together in your mother's womb. You are not an accident. God formed you, and out of love, he made you. And he made you to have a relationship with him, to know him, to worship him, to walk with him, to rely on him. And that's the only way your heart's going to be fulfilled. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until we find our rest in thee. If you really want to know God, there's one God. And this is a personal relationship, far more than rules or rituals. This is far more than uh, any kind of regulations or religion. This is a relationship, one God, not an impersonal force but an actual uh, relationship with a living God, and not a thousand gods, one God. Now, this one God has revealed himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God sent his Son. His Son's name is Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, fully God and fully human. He was human, sinless, different than us, but human just like us. And the reason is because he was faithful and he died on a cross for our sins. He was a substitutionary atonement. He took our place. He paid the penalty for sins. He paid it in full. And with that sacrifice, love is demonstrated. He died, but he didn't stay in the grave. He overcame the death. He was victorious over the devil and death and any kind of despair and discouragement. And he's risen. He ascended into heaven and he's going to return. Now, when you put your trust in Jesus, that's the best decision in the world. And you will have eternal life and forgiveness of sins. Also, the Holy Spirit will come in you. Not that God is next to you only, but now he's in you. God dwells in you. That was God's design. First, he had a tabernacle. He dwelt in a special way there. Then the temple. And then Jesus came. And then Jesus said that actually our bodies are the temple. And now we don't necessarily need to go to a temple. Oh, it's good to go to church. But we are the temple. We are God's temple, the Holy Spirit in us, in an intimate relationship. He empowers, he leads, and this is our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, in the Bible, there's three statements God is. God is love, God is light, and God is a consuming fire. It's so important to let God be God. And sometimes if you've had, let's say, a parent that was mean or cruel, you might have a false view of God that he is like that parent, but he is different. If you've been in a church and you've had bad experiences, it's been manipulative, dead, boring, abusive, you might have a tainted view of God, but God is different than that negative church experience. God is good all the time. He is trustworthy. He keeps all his promises. He will never leave you or forsake you. And you are made in God's image. You are designed to glorify him. And you need to receive his love so that you can love yourself, love other people, and love God. The most fulfilled you'll ever be in life is when you're abiding with Jesus and you receive his love, you're trusting him. When you do that, your house will be like a house on a rock, not in the house of the sand. So when the streams and wind and trials come, you will stand on that rock. Jesus will be your strength. And I want to tell you today, if you've never put your trust in Jesus, to make a decision. I was with two people last night who made the decision for the first time to follow Jesus. You can make that decision right now, and I want to pray with you. Father God, thank you for the people watching around the world who have not yet made a decision to follow you, Jesus. 
And Lord, you make it very clear. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. You are our good shepherd, and you are the light of the world. You are the Savior, the Messiah, and you are trustworthy that you died for our sins. And by grace, an undeserved gift, you're risen and you invite us to follow you, to put our trust in you. Today, right now, God, many people opening up their hearts for the first time to receive you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. And I thank you for each of these decisions. And we pray in your name. Amen. When you hear about God's goodness, you, you have to respond. And you can have different responses, but the best response is to draw near, receive his love, and trust him, to decide to follow Jesus. If you reject Jesus, it doesn't change the fact that he is going to rule and reign forever. And it doesn't change the fact that he is good, that he is the Alpha and the Omega, and that really no one can stop him. It doesn't change the fact of who he is, the Savior of the world. There's so much evidence. Look at the evidence of the resurrection, and you'll see that this isn't a blind faith. It isn't a foolish faith. It's actually a very intelligent faith. Love God with your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. And when you love God, you're going to love your neighbor. God's going to change your heart. So you forgive other people. You love people who are different than you. You pray for people. You serve people. God's given you gifts. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your opportunities. Live for Jesus. And uh, whatever God leads you to do, it's going to be wonderful because it'll glorify his name. It'll bless other people. And it'll be uh, a fulfillment of God's design for you. When we try to take the steering wheel of our own life, we mess it up. We go off the road. We look back and we think, why didn't I trust God? You will never regret trusting Jesus. That's a little bit about who God is. I hope that encourages you. You can read Psalm 84 about seeking God. You can read Psalm 46. He's our refuge, strength, and ever-present help in trouble. And in Psalm 84, it says those who trust God, they go from strength to strength. In your weakness, God's power will be evident. So celebrate who God is. Don't deny any of his character. God is compassionate, gracious, kind, holy. He has a wrath. He's just. And when you uh, experience God's kindness, it draws you to repentance, turning from sin, 180 degrees, turn to God. Let's do that today. Let's turn to God because of who he is. And you will never find anyone uh, that you will stand in awe. Anyone is inspiring. Uh, anyone that's the same teacher, miracle worker as Jesus. He's different than every other religious leader. And he wants a relationship with you. Draw close to Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And let's follow him together. Again, share this video with other people who might be interested in Jesus. And then also you can list your prayer requests, what country you're watching this from. It's my honor to dive into God's word with you. Spend time in John chapter 15 about abiding with Jesus. Because when you abide with Jesus, you're going to bear much fruit. And uh, it's my joy to open up the Bible, talk about it, grow in our faith together. God's doing a great work around the world. We're seeing incredible things here in Seattle, Washington. There's a lot of unity. People are turning to the Lord and do digital ministry, reaching millions of people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Have a great day with the Lord. And again, please share this video. And we'll talk again Saturday. Any questions you have on Instagram, just type them in and we respond on Saturdays. Have a great day.